Today we're gonna make tonkatsu, and that's what we need to make tonkatsu. Uh, center cut pork loin. If you can't find it, you can use shoulder pork and panko and tempura flour. But we usually use flour, but we out of it, so we use tempura powder flour and the bulldog tonkatsu sauce is good. Everything available at Tomato 2 grocery store. Now we're going to cut pork for the good amount of thickness and then we're gonna get a cut right there at the edge so the meat not gonna get shrink. Um, there's another way you can just you can just use the tenderizer. Now we're going to put black pepper and salt. Now we're going to put flour on the pork. Don't put extra flour on it. Now we're going to put egg. Now we're going to put panko. Now we're going to fry the pork. Until golden brown. Until golden brown. We put shredded cabbage on the side. Hi guys, this is Tomato 2 and right by Sushiyoko and here's the schedule and I'm going to show you a few things that we have in here. This is what it looks like. Um, we also have rice over here in ramen. It's still is also going on. And right here to our right, we have a lot of things that half of this is um, stuff that we strictly get from Japan that nobody else has. And you can see over here we have tea, ramen, melon soda, a bunch of that. This is what it looks like. And if you come over here, we have a lot of things strictly from Japan as well that nobody else has. Um, over here in the bottom, we have tonkatsu sauce, and as you can also see, there's a variety of them. This is the sauce that we show y'all in the video that we use. And over here, tonkatsu sauce. Over here, we have soy sauces, and this is a variety, so we have low sodium, regular, all that. And over here, we show you in the video how to make katsuro sauce, and this is the sauce that you need to make it. Right, we have a lot of vinegar and a lot of dressings that you can use. Again, it's a lot of variety that you can choose from, and we also get sugar from Japan, nobody else has it. Over here is a snack aisle, right beside the sauce aisle, and we have a lot of chips, candy, light snacks you can eat. Beneath the row, we have a lot of sauces as well from Japan that nobody else has. Sugar yaki sauce, yaki miki sauce. Also over here, we have a lot of variety of natto. Over here in the back, we have a lot of frozen sweets and Food. Kind of built like a convenience store. You can see. Mentaiko, frozen meat, beef tongue, scales up. You can see. 
In the freezer, we have a lot of um, different varieties of ramen you can choose from. I would really recommend the yakisoba. And this one right here, really good. A lot of fried things you can fry. You can just fry the korokke. Never got a kind of korokke. You can just fry the karage, bread, pan. Here we have Yoshinoya. A lot of people don't have this. Yoshinoya. Just heat it up and put it on the rice. We have some bento boxes over here. Side dishes. Over here we have sashimi. Here as well, octopus, tuna. These are pango. That's what I use for make tonkatsu in the video. And this one, you can make tempura with this. But uh, I use this to make uh, tonkatsu. And uh, these right here, you can make a uh, takikomi gohan and a lot of kind of sugars. And you can make okonomiyaki or takoyaki with these powders. Over here is the variety of people you can choose from. With this, you can make a nice sushi. Over here, we also have a variety of jellies, which you can only get here and get straight from Zara Japan. Come around the corner with a lot of miso vegetables. We have refrigerated sake if you want that or room temperature over here. Coming back to the front of the store, we have a lot of face wash over here. Um, makeup remover, moisturizer. Down here we have concentrated um, carpito, face mask. Over here we have hair wax. Oh. Hair dye that you can use. People with gray hair, you know. Today here we are going to be featuring Nakato's sushi as well as our uh, Japanese comfort food chawamushi. So um, my restaurant, uh, Nakato Japanese restaurant, has been in the family for over 48 years. I'm the third generation. Um, my grandmother started it back in 1972 in Atlanta and we have locations in South Carolina as well as North Carolina and Springfield, Missouri. So if you have a chance, um, please come by and join us. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce uh, Chef Ikumi. Today, um, are we are going to be doing a feature of a temari sushi, which is known in Japan, literally translated to haki sack, or um, let's see, temari, it's uh, te is hand, and mari is ball. So as you can see from the shape, the beautiful colors and arrangement represents the temari in Japan. Also, we are doing a simple chawamushi, which is a Japanese savory custard dish, which is a very uh, home cooking and it's a comfort food in Japan. So a lot of the kids and families enjoy that uh, and find comfort in it. So hopefully during this COVID crisis, you get to make some at home and enjoy it as well. Without further ado, I'm gonna pass it over to Chef Ikumi. Okay. Yes. Um, so, are we gonna start making the food already? Yes, we okay. can start with, um, let's start with the sushi rice. All right, so one of the most important things in sushi is the rice. Um, we have our own special mix for the vinegar when we vinegar the rice. However, um, you can go to the farmer's market and buy your sushi vinegar that's already pre-mixed for you. That sushi vinegar. Right here, you can purchase a pre mix sushi vinegar if you like. And I think that would be the easiest way uh, to go about 
making sushi making rice. the sushi rice at home if you're not comfortable making it from scratch. The ratio depends on the chef. In every restaurant in the world, it's all different. So let me get started. Um, first, we have our Japanese short grain rice. Uh, rec definitely recommend like a high quality short grain rice. Um, just gonna throw it in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix the vinegar. And when I do this, I try to spread the vinegar around. And also, in Japanese, we call this shariwo kiru. Kiru means to cut. So we're not gonna kind of like mix it around like this. What we do is we kind of slice the rice to spread the vinegar through and mix it around like that. Um, the reason being it is um, to keep the rice kernels from staying whole. And while the steam rice has the vapors, I am fanning it so it sort of dilutes the vinegar as it spreads through the rice. Yeah, and you'll see you'll, um, these chunks of rice or clumps of rice, and you try to separate all of that together too. Um, spread it out so the rice cools down, and this way it will stick together easier later when we do the timari sushi. So let me just, while this is cooling down, I'm gonna show you some of the ingredients that we're gonna be using. Um, we have here some kanikama, uh, imitation crab stick, avocado. I'm gonna skip over this turnip here, um, red radish. We have ebi shrimp uh, and smoked salmon. So all of these ingredients you should be able to buy at your farmer's market. Um, and we're gonna be doing some toppings as well. Um, this is a boiled quail egg a cherry tomato, um, some salmon caviar, ikura. Uh, this is just a little ball of cream cheese, snow pea, the mayonnaise. And we'll also be using ham and carrot. And these we have prepared with little cute cookie cutters. Um, so it's fun to use for, I guess, children. If you look over here, like as we showed before, um, you can make all kinds of fun shapes and art, artwork. Sachi, this is actually Sachi's personal collection. Do you know where you can find these little cookie cutter shapes? The cookie cut cutter shapes, uh, actually, I uh, ordered it online through Amazon, actually. So there's some variety of cookie cutters in different shapes and sizes. And also, um, in Japan, it's very popular to have karabin, which is uh, character bentos. And those come in handy, not just for making temari sushi, but making lunch for anyone who likes to get a little bit more creative. So they, those have been handy for me. So uh, I'll start making some temari sushi and uh, we'll... We cut the pre-cut saran wrap into maybe small squares. Yeah. Yeah. If you and can then kind of see the size. You start with a ping pong size uh, rice ball, along with the topping of your choice. If you want to lay it down first. Um, so we have the ball. It's going to be about a ping pong size ball. Our topping we're going to use. Start off with the smoked salmon. And here's the ball. It was so simple. All you got to do is just wrap it up and twist it around. And for the base, that's pretty much it. So I'll do a few of these. Do shrimp. Uh, it's really easy for children to do as well. And uh, it's basically the saran wrap helps shape the ball as you twist it. So it's a very simple and easy process to make the sushi rice a little bit tighter so it doesn't fall apart. And this dish actually originated in Kyoto for uh, the geisha performers to be able to eat without having to ruin their makeup. 
so it wants to be a smaller bite size uh, rounder shape so it's easier to handle as well as um, eat one of the ingredients I'm going to be using is avocado which I like to slice thin Um, so I think I'm going to open these up and go into the toppings. So a um, couple things you can do to open them up. You can just cut them or you can unravel it whichever way you like. Sometimes I like it this way. Um, for the preparation purposes, um, keep, it, keep, it stays moist when you keep it wrapped and then you want to do all of it and then open, and open them up all at the same time. These are great for hors d'oeuvres for a house party and so when you're making a lot of it by having the balls just prepped and ready um, it stays fresh uh, in the saran wrap and when you're ready to plate you can start cutting them open and displaying it that way. And you can get really creative with it. Um, I've seen um, people put umeboshi on top of the cucumber sometimes. Um, umeboshi is a pickled plum, and it has like a distinct sourness uh, because it's been pickled for so long. But it's really great with cucumber and very refreshing during the summer. My kids love it at oh. home with just cucumber slices and umeboshi mixed in together. And that's another trait of Japanese cooking. They try to um, get very colorful and seasonal. And so you can uh, enjoy a lot of the colors and textures. So the first one I'm gonna do is the smoked salmon right here. Um, I'm gonna cut a very thin slice of lemon. And like that. And lay it on top. And we also, I think, like to enjoy and cream cheese with our smoked salmon. So put it on top like that. <laughs> Next, we have our shrimp. Um, so I think um, I'm going to put some caviar on there. So this is this is salmon caviar, also known as ikura. And we can throw a couple on there like that. Oh, forgot one thing. Um, so this is an English cucumber. And another thing we can do with the shrimp I thought of is getting a regular peeler like this. Just peel it, peel it away. And you're going to get something like this. And you can easily, simply just wrap it around. Like so. And it's another decorative form. Then for the ham, the what ham. are you going to go, go so, to? So, um, as Sachi told me, it's called a cob. <laughs> cob mix with a cob a mix. ham and egg. So this is a little quail egg. And I'm just going to slice up a little piece as such and throw it on top. And so this is our ham and egg. Um, so for the avocado, um, I'm going to put more ham, actually. And... Or you can do a seafood mix. Or too. a seafood mix. Actually, yeah, you know what? I'm going to show you a seafood mix. I have here the imitation crab. And I'm just going to cut up really small. Like such. And I'm going to throw it in this little bowl right here. I'm going to use some of the shrimp that I had already. Small pieces again. 
Here's another small piece of the smoked salmon that I'll use. Throw a little mayo in there, mix it around. And I have a very quick, simple seafood mix. Uh, the Japanese mayo uses more um, egg yolk in it, so it's going to have a more yellow color as well. It's not going to be as white as the Hellman's or other American mayonnaise. And definitely one of our favorites. A little tomato, a little cherry tomato. For the cucumber, let's see, I could add another cherry. Okay, you know what? Let's throw the cherry tomato from here onto the cucumber. Make it a little more. And then I have a small piece of ham. I'll put it right there. And there you have it. This is some tamari sushi samples that you can do at home. Any, anything that's pliable when it's cut thin would be the best. So it sort of molds to the spherical shape. Like even cucumber, if you cut it too thick, it wouldn't um, sort of form to the sphere, sphere. So anything that's a little bit softer in texture, like avocado, thinly sliced cucumber, would be um, the best bet. You can get really creative. And... Um, as you can see, some of the carrots, it sort of lifts off of the temari, so uh, more of the softer vegetables might be the best. But if you wanted to add a little bit of color, you can definitely add as a topping. So um, I guess we'll start doing the mixture for the chawamushi. Um, Chalmushi is like an egg custard, um, very soft and smooth. And Let me show you. This is the very silky. Yeah, it's softer than and jello. Soft, yes. Softer than flan. And a lot of uh, mothers and or parents actually start feeding the kids chalmushi because it's very soft as baby food. And it has a lot of ingredients that you can add and subtract as you go. Very nutritious. Um, so, to make this egg mixture, um, what we have with the ingredients that you have already, um, we have eggs. This is usukuchi soy sauce, light soy sauce, but please don't be confused with less sodium soy sauce. This has pretty much the same amount of sodium, it's the lighter color, so that when we make our uh, chawamushi like this, it doesn't turn very dark. It's still very light, pleasant color. Uh, next we have here, meeting. Meeting is a sweet sake. So sake includes alcohol. So meeting is sweeter version. Um, and this we use a lot to replace like sugar use. Um, and we have some salt right here. So we're gonna add a pinch of salt to our ingredients. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to beat our eggs. And one thing that I'm going to keep repeating myself later on probably is that we don't want any air bubbles. And I'm going to bring why later. But when we beat our eggs, just do it very softly. You don't have to go crazy, so you don't try to create as You try to have as little air bubbles as possible. And once it's been sort of beaten, then we can start adding all the other ingredients. Um, this is the dashi. So we have 280 grams of dashi. And again, I'm going to mix it a little bit. Then I'll add my soy sauce. There's about 14 grams of soy sauce have our mirror in here. Our, our next trick, I'm just going to pass it onto this little pitcher right here. Um, I think this will help pour out 
into the smaller portions. Um, here I will cut some shrimp. And this is the inside ingredients that are going to go into the bowls. And you can actually add chicken into it as well, smaller cuts of chicken. Um, today we're using some of the ingredients that we have at the restaurant. But again, you can add some of the savory and edamame vegetables, cooked shrimp, you can add as well. And we have our, this is the same shiitake mushrooms, but this one's already um, been simmered. And you can do raw shiitake mushrooms as well, or enoki mushrooms. You can get really creative with it. Okay. All right, so our next step is to add the egg mixture in it. And I'm gonna use a spoon, so it's a very smooth pour inside. So this is another one of those tricks for getting rid of the air bubbles. And for dishes, you can do a small bowl like this, uh, but you want to have a thicker wall if possible. So uh, this one is a traditional chamushi with a lid. It's a ceramic dish with a lid. And then if you don't have any with the thicker walls, a mug cup would do really well. All right, so the uh, next step we want to do is cover them up. The Japanese dish comes with covers usually, but if you don't have that, um, you can just cover it up with foil. And this is one of the things is so it prevents the water from dripping inside when you open up the lid of the steamer. And remember, steam is very, very hot, so please be careful. And we're gonna have this on high boil for two minutes. So we have, we're gonna boil it on high heat for two minutes. And then once the two minutes is over, we're gonna turn down the flame a little. And, um, medium high. Medium high, or medium low, medium, medium high for another 10 minutes. So let's see how we did. Um, again, we've gotta be careful with the water from the lid. The steam, it's very hot. And I'm going to use a towel here to pick it up. It's very hot again. We'll open these up one by one. Now, when you can see the broth, I don't know if you can see on this camera, but there's the broth that's floating above the egg custard. That's when you know that it is definitely cooked and finished. And the last one, the little one. All right. Um, after you put all your ingredients in, just put the toppings back on there. Um, and what I've done before is I've added yuzu peel and then cover it up again. It gives it a nice aroma with the lemon peel. And it's traditionally um, served with a wooden spoon because metal actually conducts heat. And so because the chamushi dish is so hot, you don't want it, um, you don't want the spoon burning your lips. So that's some of the uh, intricacies. And I'm gonna, Looks great. All right, I think um, we're gonna have to test this out to see how we did. <laughs> Sachi, would you do the honors? Grab the mug here. Chef, you can eat the Hi. 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 Hi